Hello there, my name's Scott. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Doodle Bug, which is a Genesis style repairable atomizer that I purchased from www.rocketsciencemods.com. Okay, so no need for any disclaimers, let's go straight ahead and show you in a bit more detail. Okay, so when you get the Doodle Bug, you're also going to get the actual atomizer, and also included will be a bag containing some spare O rings, some spare screws an allen key and some stainless steel mesh. Now you're also going to get some canthal wire as well according to the website but uh, for whatever reason that wasn't included in my little spares bag but you know I'm not too fussed about that because I've got plenty of wire anyway. Okay so the doodle bug which I believe is named after a rocket is pretty much completely handmade. Now these aren't sent out to a machine shop to be manufactured, these aren't uh, mass produced, these are made basically by a guy sitting in his shed and whacking them out on a lathe. So you're getting something uh, sort of, a little bit sort of personal, plus also the build quality is excellent too. This is a 510 atomizer connection, so that means you can use it on any device that has a 510 threading. And the overall diameter of the Doodle Bug is 22 millimeters, which means it's going to look sort of pretty sweet on just about every mod out there. Inside the tank, you're going to see this sort of uh, angled central column, which I believe is to aid wicking. The tank is made out of borosilicate glass or Pyrex, and holds around 2.8 millilitres of e-liquid. The top cap and the rest of the sort of uh, stainless steel construction is made out of 304 grade stainless steel, and it features a one millimetre air hole, and on top space for a 510 drip tip. And just about every drip tip that I've tried fits in there very nice and snugly. Underneath the top cap, you're gonna find your positive connection and your negative connection, and also a three millimetre wide wick hole, so that means you can get really nice sort of thick chunky wicks in there which is what I prefer and the hole is completely smooth there's no thread in there whatsoever. Just at the top you're going to find another hole and this is used for filling up your tank with e-liquid and uh, you can uh, have a fill screw in here if you want to. Me personally always leave it out as I prefer to have the uh, extra bit of airflow. And the positive connection is height adjustable so if you want to change the uh, height position of your top wire then you can do so. And the last thing to show you is that the, uh, the top cap has this reduced chamber which is going to sit over the top of your wicking your coil and it's been designed that way to intensify the flavour and vapour. You're also going to see that you've only got one o-ring holding the top cap in place but uh, it is so nicely machined that it does you know, click very firmly in there and you know it feels uh, pretty nice and solid too. Okay, so as the Doodle Bug is a Genesis atomizer, that means you're going to be using some stainless steel mesh to act as the wick, and it needs to be oxidised before you start to use it. Now I'm just going to carry on using the one I've been using for the last little week or so. You know, it's still working great, so there's no point in me making another one. And this was cut out from a piece of 400 mesh at a length of 35 millimetres by a width of 30 millimetres. I then rolled it up, held it in a hot flame for about sort of 20 seconds, and that is uh, all I do now for oxidising the wicks and it works an absolute treat really. And as you can see at the end now I have cut it off at a 45 degree angle and this is just to uh, sort of match the contour of the inside of the tank. Okay so now my oxidised wick is in place I'm just going to take some 0.28 gauge camphor wire and attach it to the negative terminal. So I'm just going to sort of loop it underneath, hold it in place, take an allen key and tighten it up. Now just to uh, support the wick a little bit as I'm wrapping my coils, I like to uh, take a little pin like this and just insert it inside the wick just to sort of uh, strengthen it up a bit. And this is just uh, something I made out the end of an old syringe. So for the next step I'm just going to take the wire and wrap probably around sort of three or four coils around the wick and then finish off by trapping the wire in between the two brass connectors there. And once the wire is trapped, you can then sort of tidy it up a little bit 
make it look a bit more presentable and hopefully you should end up with something that looks a bit like that. When it comes to removing the excess piece of wire, you can use a, a pair of cutters and cut it off or if you just apply a bit of tension, give it a bit of a wiggle and it should snap off nice and clean. Okay, so once all your coils have been wrapped and you've trimmed off the uh, excess pieces of wire, you then need to attach it to whatever device you're going to be using, do a bit of a test fire and make sure that all your coils are going to be lighting up evenly and at the same time. Now if only one or two coils light up, it means you're going to have to sort of play around with it a little bit because you want to get them all lighting up evenly and at the same time. Now I've just done a very quick test fire and I can see that uh, on my very top coil I've got a little tiny hot spot. Now I'm going to try and get rid of that by doing the pulsing method and that is where basically you're going to sort of tap the uh, like the switch so you're going to be turning power on off on off and sometimes you can get rid of the uh, like the hot spot that way because basically the uh, heat is just sort of starting to build up a little layer of oxidization underneath that uh, the area where the problem is. If that doesn't work then I will have to get my screwdriver out and just give the coils a little bit of a nudge. Okay so uh, let's see what happens. It's gradually uh, getting rid of it. You can see it's starting to the actual second coil is lighting up as well now. If I keep going. The third coil is starting to light up. There you go, sorted. So once you know all your coils are going to be lighting up evenly and at the same time, next step is just to uh, take your e-liquid and fill up the tank. Uh, I'm not going to sort of uh, show you the whole filling up of the tank because it's a little bit pointless, so we'll uh, just skip straight on to the next bit. Okay, so the tank has been filled up with e-liquid now, so hopefully when I press the old button, we should get plenty of nice flavour. And then the last thing to do is attach the top cap and add your 510 drip tip. Now when you put the top cap on, you want to make sure that you're going to line the air hole up so it's directly in front of the wick. This is for two reasons. One, it's going to give you the most amount of vapour. And secondly, you're going to be ensuring that the reduced size chamber is sitting in the correct position. And then take your drip tip and whack that in the end and you're good to go. Okay, so that is the doodle bug. Let's go ahead and see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the doodle bug, and what I'll do now is go ahead and show you in action. So I've got the tank filled up with some 18 milligram strength tobacco flavoured e-liquid, uh, which is a PG e-liquid. The resistance of the coil is reading around 1.1 ohms. And I'm using it on my camera Vela. The battery came off the charger probably around an hour ago. I've been having quite a good old vape since then, so I'd imagine the battery's reading something like 3.7, 3.8 volts. Okay, so this is the doodle bug. Now you can see like vapor wise, you know, chucking out plenty of vapor. You have to bear in mind though that the amount of vapor production you're gonna get will be uh, quite down to your own sort of personal setup with regards to what sort of resistance you've uh, made the coil, whether you're using a PG liquid or a VG liquid, what sort of uh, voltage or wattage you're pushing through it, etc, etc. But nevertheless, with the setup I've got here, getting uh, plenty of vapour and throw here as well. Flavour-wise, you know, getting plenty of flavour. Me personally, I find that all the uh, sort of uh, Genesis atomizers do tend to be the best sort of atomizers for bringing out the flavour of your e-liquid, and the doodle bugs are no exception, getting uh, plenty of flavour out of it. Now, 
Um, heat of the vapour, it's a nice sort of warm vape, just how I sort of like it. If I was going to say that one was like a, a cold vape, five was a hot vape, then it's definitely around the sort of, um, I'll say it's around the sort of four mark, it's definitely a, a nice sort of a warm vape, but not being sort of too hot though. When it comes to the draw, obviously it's got quite a small air hole, it's only a one millimetre and you've got that sort of reduced chamber as well, which I suppose may sort of come into sort of some sort of effect there. But the actual draw, it's, um, it's not really, really stiff, but it's definitely uh, more on the stiff side, as it were. Um, so me personally, I quite like that, you know, I do prefer to uh, have a bit, <laughs> I was going to have a bit of a stiff one, but I do prefer to have a bit of a, a stiff draw rather than like an overly airy sort of draw. So for me, you know, it's just how I like it. And if, I was going to say one's a really loose draw, five is a, a really tight draw. Then again, it's probably going to be around the, uh, like the four mark, something like that. Ease of setup, for me personally, and I find it to be quite a nice easy one to set up. You've got lots of room there to sort of uh, you know, get your wires in place and wrap your coils. It's not all sort of very, very sort of tight together. And you know, so for me, if I was going to say one was like you know, really hard, five was really easy, it's definitely around the sort of four, four and a half mark, something like that. As long as your wick is oxidising, you shouldn't really have sort of, uh, too many problems really. So that's, you know, for me, I found this to be quite easy. You know, um, to sort of summarise, it's a very nice atomizer. You know, it's nice the fact that it is one of those sort of handmade ones. Adds a little bit of sort of personality to it, I suppose. And the only real thing that sort of lets it down, and it is a very, very, very minor thing, is the engraving, which I completely forgot to mention in the close-up shots. The engraving is uh, being sort of done. It looks like it's been done by hand with one of those little sort of hand engravers. It's not the uh, sort of the neatest look for it and but you know like I said you know it is a very very minor thing I think if he could sort of have it done laser engraved or you know nicely sort of stamped in there obviously it would look a lot nicer and that's probably going to sort of bump the old price up a little bit though but you know other than that it's a great atomizer performs very well you know sort of a pretty easy one to use you know, plenty of vapor plenty of flavor plenty of throw hit and it also looks really good on sort of pretty much uh, most devices out there you know so not a lot else I can really sort of say about it. If you fancy trying one out for yourself, go along to www.rocketsciencemods.com. Thank you very much for watching. Also, come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.